If I told you you didn't have to write APIs anymore, would you believe me? No, probably not. I mean, come on. But if Dan Abramov told you you didn't have to write APIs anymore, then we'd have something to talk about, wouldn't we? Well, the new React version and all the hype around React server components starting to look like we might not need APIs anymore. Sorry for the outfit. I didn't feel like ironing a shirt. Anyways, Dan Abramov went on quite the set of rants on Twitter, and honestly, it's reinvigorated a lot of my excitement about React Server Components. As I've been playing with React Server Components more, I've been starting to see the benefits, but also struggling to wrap my head around the mental model. Thankfully, Dan's tweets have helped me a lot, and I'm starting to feel like I understand the ways Server Components benefit us as we build applications in React. Dan made a thread collecting different ways to try and pitch Server Components because he thinks it feels a lot like the old days of React, and... Some of these analogies are really interesting. I love this second one here, including the server in the unidirectional data flow of React. This one was a bit mind-blowing for me. The beauty of React is you get to choose from here down, this data exists, and you can't really go up the tree without explicitly passing setters down to lower components to update things higher up in the tree but you couldn't just mutate the data and expect the thing to change. This unidirectional flow is a huge part of why React scales so well and is so simple to work with, and the thought of including the server in it makes so much sense. Other frameworks have tried this, like Remix or even Next itself, but the unidirectional flow there starts with the route. So if your route isn't the place where you need the data, it's somewhere else like a component you want to reuse, that unidirectional nature of the flow kind of gets broken up in weird arbitrary ways. React server components, your component says what it needs, and now it has it. And honestly, it's been really nice to work with. All these other frameworks have weird data loading patterns where the thing appears or use a hook to access it, but in server components, you just await the data. It really does feel like you don't need APIs. This is an example I've been working on for a different video. I think it really helps show the power of server components though. This is an interface where tweets will be fetched. It's not actual tweets, it's emoji-only tweets. This data is fetched on the server and not on the client. The client receives effectively HTML. You don't have to worry about the serialization of the data, things like date times, all that type of stuff. How am I actually getting it there? Let's take a look at the code quick. So in here, I have a database connection that I'm executing that is firing SQL. This is a component, export default async function tweets, and this component is executing a SQL query to get data. I happen to know the type of this data, it's tweet type, but if I was using something like a Prisma or an ORM that's aware of the different types of the things I'm fetching, I wouldn't have to assign the data type here, I would just have it. And now I can map against this and return these view components. That's it. I just await the data, in this case, a SQL call, and I return the contents. And now I have a component that I can mount anywhere in my application. It is that simple. Do you know what's even easier than fetching data in a server component? Subscribing to the channel. The little button's right there. We talk about React, TypeScript, all sorts of stuff like this, and less than half of y'all are subscribed, so please hit the button. Helps us out a ton. So what are the pain points? In this example, we are using state. So theoretically, this component would rerun whenever the state changes, which means it would have to execute this, which is why when we try and do this, it's going to fail. And if we take a look quick here, we see the use state call isn't allowed because we haven't marked this as a use client file. If we mark this as use client file, we'll no longer be able to do the database connection. We'd have to put that in somewhere else. This model is weird. Rather than an API, what you kind of would want here is a component that wraps your component that interacts on the client. So if I wanted a component here that had an input, I'd have to create a separate file. I can do that quickly. Uh, input dot TSX, I can export const input component. I can paste that here, return, let Copilot do its thing. I don't need that. It's an input component, you silly goose. Here we go. And import is state from React. And all we have to do to make sure React knows this is client only is we put a quick use client on top. And now, rather than using that, I can put on top here, input component. And since we marked this as use client, it will now be safe for us to use. What's cool here is I can pass props 
the input component. So if I fetch some data here, like I want input component to know how many tweets there are here. I can pass count equals rows dot number. And then on input, instead of having this be a string input, I could have it be a, you know, I'll leave it as a string input. Let's say we want to put the current count here. So div current count and props count number and props dot count we will wrap that and ta-da we literally could just pass props count it's rows at length sorry brain fart anyways the magic here is very specifically we can fetch data on the server and then pass that data to the client. We don't already need an API for this data to be accessible on the client. The data flows from the component on the server, including through HTML now that only exists on the server. This code doesn't run on client. This just is HTML as far as the client's concerned. But on the server, you can get the data. And then for components that need to update, you can pass that data from the server to the client just by passing props. It's kind of magical. And when that flow clicks, I get it. And Remix has had a decent bit of this for a while. I can admit that. But there's something magical about with any given component awaiting data and then passing it to another component. This component here, this server async component, is kind of an API. And that's the mind-blowing aha moment I had that and you get much more excited about server components. The same way I used to wrap components in hawks to give them data, we can now write server components that are APIs that wrap another component with data. What about when data changes? Like this helps for the first paint, but from there, what about everything else? This is actually built into React as well. In this example, we have an iterator that encodes content, sleeps, and then yields that again. This is a generator, which means a function that returns multiple things as like a stream. The magic here is we can, as an API, return on this route an iterator that will change the contents of what it returns after 200 milliseconds. That's insane. That's so cool that a single function can send multiple things down and the client, without needing to know anything else, can render and do stuff with it possible that this will be exactly how we do this with components as well uh to be determined but keep an eye out for that i couldn't be more excited for what these new apis entail and in reality the possibility that we might not need apis at all i was skeptical going in but i'm really starting to see the patterns still not sure how i feel about the file separation but i am certain there are things here that work and they work really well genuinely excited about the app directory i hope that you guys are too. Keep an eye out for the tutorial I have coming. I am super hyped on that. And check out the videos that are on the side here. I think they're pretty good. I worked my butt off on them and I'm wearing nicer clothes than them. So 